Yes. Morning. Welcome to Colonial Heights Church of Christ. Uh, beautiful day in the Lord, so let's get started with some prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this day, for the opportunity to be gathered together to worship you. We pray, Father God, that your spirit direct us and guide us today so that the words that are spoken may reach our hearts. We ask, Father God, for your guidance that we can look to, for ways to actively, actively go about building your kingdom, sharing the love of Jesus with everyone we come in contact with. So we thank you and we look forward to the service for the day and on through the upcoming week. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to read from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The sun shines in the, the light, excuse me, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Join me as we worship our, our Lord, as we worship our Heavenly Father and His Son and the Holy Spirit. Our first song is called Praise Song, and we're just going to sort of flow from one end to the next as we worship together. We praise you, O Lord, for the love that you gave and the time that you spent on this world for our sins. We lift up your name in honor and praise. In Jesus we place all our love and our faith, and we know that you are the Savior, and we know that you are the Son. And we know that you are the Savior of everyone. The time is now near when you will appear. When we see your face and your voice we will hear. And then we will sing to Jesus the King, the Maker, Creator of everything. And we know that you are the Savior, and we know that you are the Son, and we know that you are the Savior of everyone. We praise you, O Lord, for the love that you give, and the time that you spent on this world for our sins. We lift up your name in honor and praise. In Jesus we place all our love and our faith. And we know that you are the Savior. And we know that you are the Son. And we know that you are the Savior of everyone. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders. 
wonders, wonders of His love. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves something in my past, uh, something that's referred to, or I've listened or learned or from other per people. Uh, communion. It's not about just taking the, the bread and the wine. There's more to that. It's a spiritual thing. It's a thing that connects all of us, especially to the church, to Christ, anything we do in our lives. We're challenged every day. And every time we take that communion, it's the remembrance of the Lord, what he gave up for us. People don't see that. People see maybe a, just a routine of taking the emblems. But it's not that. It's more than that. It's what you feel inside of you. When the Lord gave us what was forgiveness of sin, it really meant more than just that. The Lord spoke about bread and wine being his body. This is how we describe it, but it's not. Although we look at it as a, as a Kind of an insinuation of it. The bread and uh, bread and wine is normally something that all of you should be considering every day when you walk with the Lord. When you go to the, the commissary, you go to shopping, and you see somebody up there being upset or yelling or doing something that's not of the norm. Why do I say that? Well, this week, going to Walmart, I was walking in and I see these two individuals fighting, not physically, but alter, you know, altercation. And I looked over and uh, didn't think twice, but what bothered me most was the profanity of those two individuals. It didn't matter, it didn't matter who they were as far as race, color, or anything, and gender. But the profanity that they were displaying to our kids that were walking by them, and not taking that consideration. And the Lord, and that's why I say when we take this communion, it's not about just this day, it's about every day. So I didn't judge them, I wanted to say something, but I didn't. In many cases, many would probably say something, agitate the situation even worse, let law enforcement handle that. In many cases, people will interject and bring their own opinions to the situation, which means nothing. Unless it's life or death, it's a situation. But in my case, I walked by, 
I noticed it bothered me, the profanity, watching the kids go by. And I said, Lord, hope you can take care of both of them. It's not my business. And kept going. Eventually, when I, by the time I bought my purchase and walked out, I tell you a long question about their handling the situation. But which one are you? Are you the judge of these individuals? The only person who judges is the Lord. And when we take this communion, it's based on that. Understanding that, hey, if you're going to judge, be, be ready to be judged as well. Eventually. But uh, other than that, all I say is the Lord is with us every day in this communion. Is that representation of the Lord. So don't just take it one day, today, Sunday. No, it's every day. It's every day you carry that with you. And those who are in observance in Christ, you may take, partake in the emblem. for the offering, we no longer pass our trays around. Uh, not at this time. But we set out two booths for those uh, who want to give generosity to the church and the Lord. Um, what is this purpose of the tithe? Now, I get to see the tithe every day when I'm doing the finances for the church and how significant it makes changes to this church and the growth it gives it. Uh, I can't explain how important that is. We make sure that uh, we can pay our bills and be able to bring in new people, new kids to the Lord. Have them come here. Have them find something. Many years ago, I was a troubled child. And uh, I was angry, angry, to be honest. That was the key word, angry. And I was walking from school to my house, which was probably about five miles away. And that day was a bad day. And the next thing you know, I'm going by this church. Don't know what it was, don't know if it was Catholic, Baptist, Protestant, don't know, can't tell. But I do know that I walked in there. I do know, I do remember asking for help. Not from somebody, from God. Nobody who wrote me, I don't know who, it was just empty at the time. Like I said, the administrators were in the back. But I walked in there and sat down and found my peace before I can continue on my journey to the house. It didn't change me and believing in the Lord at that time, but it gave me some way, some refuge for a minute. 
And that's why I love this church, to see it open every day. I love to come here. I volunteer to do things different every day. Like we said before, it's not about just the money, the monetary, but it's the love or the service. Those two help this church support for others who are just like me, who is troubled, and match here during the week. Somebody can walk right in there any day looking for the Lord. And that was me many years ago. That's where this monetary love and service is all about. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity you've given us to serve you and your church and the congregation. Lord, thank you for everything you've done for us, the emblem that you provided, and everything that we remember you in, in this church. In your name we pray. Amen. As you heard earlier that this time is going to be for our selection of trustees or for the remaining of the year, I guess. <laughs> Till next time. So, on the ballot, we have three names, Isabel, Jesse, and Terry. You can select none of them, one, two, or three. How many of you feel <coughs> that you want? And we'll take the tally up in majority of of the uh, count will, cons will be considered as their selection. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can come and select trustees, Father. Help us to make wise decisions. Help us to do your will, Father. Let us uh, pick the right people for the disposition to glorify you, Father. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me go ahead into uh, announcements, um, and uh, if you're still praying and contemplating, by all means, uh, feel free to. Um, if anybody would like to have offering envelopes for next year, there is a sign-up sheet on the welcome table in the back, and um, you know, please sign up, um, and uh, we'll make sure that by the first of the year or thereabouts that, that you'll receive offering envelopes. Uh, tomorrow at 4 o'clock is our regular radio broadcast, but it's going to be different. What's going to be different is it's going to be live. And uh, I'm going to be moderating, and Ed and Cameron and Dan Dust, who I know many of you heard preach about a month ago or so, uh, are going to be on the radio talking about prayer. And uh, so uh, what I've got is on the back welcome table, uh, is some information, and, and if you got the church paper, okay, within the last week or two, uh, on the back panel there is a list of ways to connect with us, including the information about the radio program, 100.1 FM, 1010 AM. Uh, I, I use an app on my phone to connect with radio stations, because quite often that time of the day I'm not in the car, and I don't really have a radio at home that I use. So I have an app called TuneIn, T-U-N-E-I-N. And all I have to do, my, my uh, calendar uh, hits at five minutes till four, and I bring up the app, and then I get to hear the last minute and a half of the SWAT program before us. But if you'd like to, uh, you know, to, to tune in tomorrow especially, it's gonna be a special program, and, and uh, I, you know, there might be some dead air. I've threatened that, you know, if they don't talk and give answers, I'm gonna tell jokes. So would they please, uh, you know, give good answers and everything. Um, Christmas Eve service will be on Christmas Eve at six o'clock. And we're gonna be, as part of the program, reading children's Christmas books. And if you have any children's Christmas books, even if you don't have any kids left at home or whatever, if you could bring them with you next Sunday when you come, we'd like to have those. Uh, we've got a number of them. We're gonna end up with four, five, six readers, some of them with children. Uh, the audience will watch and listen, we'll have a microphone and everything. We'll put it up on Facebook Live. We know that some people will be with family that evening. You can maybe bring it up, whatever. Um, and, and I know Arlene, it's, it's not easy to, if you don't have Facebook, you can't watch Facebook Live, I understand. So be here. 
It's a candlelight communion service, and uh, it, it'll be, we're shooting for 45 minutes. It might be just a little bit longer than that if some of the Christmas stories are longer, but it's going to be fast moving. There'll be songs, there'll be scriptures, there'll be these uh, kids' books, and um, it's an opportunity to celebrate Christmas. Um, Ed, would you come up, please? I didn't, I didn't tell Ed I was going to do this today, but I'm going to do it today. Ambushed again. Yeah, ambushed again. Um, Ed has made a decision through much prayer, and his decision is that he's stepping down as an elder. Now, it's not stepping down, you know, like to become any more of a slacker than he is already. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Anytime. But it's stepping down because he feels led by God to do more with prayer ministry. And Ed does a lot with prayer ministry now. But uh, it's an opportunity that he feels like he needs to make good use of. And so uh, starting the first of the year, Ed will not be an elder in the church here. Now, he's still a spiritual leader, isn't he? And he's still going to help us with our prayer ministry and be active here in the church. Um, Ed, is there anything you want to say about prayer ministry? Or... Just prayer is the way God wants us to talk to him. Prayer is the avenue that he chose, and we should be faithful to that. So keep praying, keep talking to the Lord, and he will guide you. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. Well, Ed, I think you were coming on and training as an elder when I got here about six years ago. Uh, in deacon. I was training yeah. for a deacon. Okay, okay. So Ed's been in leadership here about six years, and uh, as I say, he continues as a spiritual leader. And uh, we're, we're gonna continue to invite him to many of the uh, elders meetings, leadership meetings, because we want his input on prayer events and help that way, so. Father, I thank you for our time together today, a time of worshiping you and being in your word, a time of, of fellowship together, a time of conducting the business of your church. And Father, we thank you for Ed, for the great way that you use him to challenge all of us, each of us, to pray more and to be closer to you. Thank you, Father, for making him successful in the work that he does in your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, any other announcements? Anything we, we missed? Yeah, go ahead, Pam. Uh, my neighbor, uh, Joy, uh, came through his operation successful and uh, he, is, he got home yesterday. Oh, that's great. Praise God. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and my brother-in-law, Craig, had surgery on his vocal cords uh, this week, and he's also home and doing well. So, uh, And from what we hear, Gene and Helen are both doing well uh, following their surgeries, so praise God for, uh, for these. But thank you, Hal. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Joe? Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Uh, Jerry Vogt, everybody that's on the ballot has been elected for these positions. So congratulations, Isabel. Congratulations, Jesse. And congratulations, Terry, for being nominated trustees. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, everyone, and God bless.